Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, Thailand's Tanon Sak Seesom Bunsuk speaks to us about his career's most memorable moments and overcoming his struggles. And Team Slovakia share with us their hopes and dreams as the faces of badminton in their country. Please welcome, from Thailand, Tanonsak Sensum Punsak. No Thai player has ever won any title here. It's always nice when we have a final where we know that history will be created. It's like impossible uh, because like from first round I just play one by one, round by round. I never think like I get final or champion. <laughs> Not only reached his first ever Super Series tournament final, he leaves as champion. After last point, I get champion late. I feel really happy, yeah. And then anything it's like finished already, then I can get, I can do it. Yeah. That was Tanong Sak Sinsum Bunsok's finest hour. He etched his name in the history books as the first Thai men's singles player to triumph at a World Super Series premiere event. It had been a long time coming for the 26-year-old, who had struggled to live up to his billing as Thailand's next big thing in men's singles after his emergence on the international circuit in 2008. I'm also keep hard training and then waiting for this, like, when I go to uh, international tournament like Super Series last time when I 18 and then it's about 8 or 9 years and then I just keep training hard and then waiting for, for uh, the time I can do it then finally I can get champion. His latest success vindicated a big decision he made in 2012. Not satisfied with his development in the national team at the time, Tanong Sak left the setup to try and build his career on his own. While being an independent player had its benefits, managing his own finances threw up some major challenges. My program for training and then in national team, something maybe a bit different, somebody like pressure or something. And then when I independent, it's just, uh, it's just my anything. My, just can do or cannot do, it's okay. I have coach, yeah, but he's uh, in Bangkok. If like, I want he go to like uh, tournament, like I also pay. I pay anything by myself also. Then sometimes it's uh, like, cannot lah. Then I just go alone. Apart from a gold medal at the 2013 Southeast Asian Games, the left-hander had no major rewards for his toil. But things began to change last year. The Thai ace began 2016 brightly. He was a semi-finalist at three Grand Prix gold tournaments before defeating Indonesian veteran Sonny Dwi Kuntoro for the SCG Thailand Open crown. It was a long-awaited victory that resonated personally for the shuttler. It's really important because it's my, my country and then I, I can get champion in Thailand Open. From young, I, like, I want to get this one long time. Tanong Sak's Denmark Open triumph was his career's biggest moment, and on the occasion, he paid tribute to Thai King Bumipon Adunyade, the staunch supporter of badminton, who had passed away the previous week. When I get champion, then I get more confident and with a good performance, then I can do it well. In Thailand, uh, the king is like, yeah, very respected, respect, and then everybody respect and then can do anything for him. Like that. The time is like the last thing uh, what I can do for my king. Also. Yeah. The memorable victory at the Odette Sports Park also helped to heal some wounds. Tanong Sak had failed to make the cut at August's Rio Olympics and like any athlete, 
missing out on a chance to compete on a sport's most celebrated stage was a painful blow. But the Thai player knew he needed to get over the disappointment quickly if he was to take another shot at the next edition in Japan come 2020. From first time, maybe a little bit, and then I just uh, changed my mind, and then it's coming back because like the way is so long. Every year, like have tournament, and then still have 2020 in Tokyo. Yeah, then I just keep focus and then keep training hard, and I want to uh, be there also. Yeah, I want to. Uh, get in the, to the top five. If that, uh, then I feel, I think I, I will try my best. Yeah. Now, with back to back major international titles under his belt, Tanong Sak can look ahead with optimism. At the start of 2017, he was invited back into the national team setup. With newly appointed head coach Rexy Mainaki providing fresh impetus, Tanong Sak is confident his return to the team will help steer his career in the right direction this time around. The president also, he called me like, she need I do for, like, for my country. La. Yeah, then, okay. Then I say, okay, because uh, I come back to join the national team also, I do for Thailand also. Yeah. When last time, when like, I'm an independent player. Just uh, do anything by myself, and then sometimes like headache, and then many problems. Then just now, I I come back to try with the national team. I don't I don't need to worry about that. Then I just keep focus in training and tournament. Yeah. With Tanong Sak Seisong Bunso bolstering his ranks in men's singles, Thai badminton is well equipped to challenge on all fronts. Okay, my favorite actor, uh, very difficult question. I think I like all the actors. <laughs> I would say Ranbir Kapoor from Bollywood. Uh, yeah, all the actresses are really, really good actually. <laughs> all of them are beautiful and <laughs> I don't have any one in that. Okay, mine so is... I love all of them. Okay, mine is Shruti Asal. So one thing I like about her, uh, 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 it can be just her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I like about Jerry is uh, very supportive. Uh, if uh, if I'm not playing well, also is very supportive. Uh, not like other boys, he gets very angry. <laughs> can you name some of them? <laughs> not here. <laughs> I think my car. I've just got a new car, so that is the most expensive gift I've given to myself recently. The most expensive thing? I don't buy things, so I get gift. So So, so she has a fiancé, so you get that. <laughs> <laughs> so she's still getting the gifts. So till now I didn't buy anything like very expensive things. Till now whatever I got is like as a gift. So how lucky she is. <laughs> Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want you to tell us what is the longest recorded rally in the World Championships. We'll give you the answer after the break. When we return, we find out more about how the fastest racket sport is faring in Slovakia. With digital innovations, shuttle time is now more fun, engaging and accessible than ever. 
So get connected to BWS Badminton School's program. Find out more about BWS Grassroots Initiatives on these platforms. Download the app, visit the website and get active on Facebook. Your gateway to shuttle time has never been so easy. Before the break, we asked you to tell us what is the longest recorded rally in the World Championships? The answer is 108. The marathon rally occurred in the 2013 BWF World Championships in the quarterfinal between Denmark's Janne Jorgensen and Vietnam's Nguyen Thanh Minh. A crucial rally in the third game lasted 108 shots. The Vietnamese was just a point away from taking the match, but Jorgensen refused to concede defeat. Both players were pushed to the edge before Nguyen eventually eclipsed the Dane. Every two years, the Suderman Cup, the World Mixed Team Championships, witnesses many of the sport's developing nations grace the world stage. While the more established badminton countries battled for the prized silverware, there were those who fought for world team rankings and national pride. One such team was Slovakia. Badminton Unlimited was in the Gold Coast as we caught up with their national team. They spoke at length about their hopes, dreams and the experience gained at the Suderman Cup. It actually inspired me a lot and it gives me a lot of motivation because it's really nice to see all those big stars here around, how they practice, how they behave, what they do outside and also on the court. So it's a great experience. I really like it here. I have played Lindan in my career, so I have played some of the good players. But if we can make a good result here, of course, for Slovak Federation, this all means a lot. So this is the more, it's more important for me, like to do something for Slovakia, not just for my individual career. Situated in Central Europe, Slovakia is a landlocked nation bordered by the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Poland. Badminton has never been considered a professional option for aspiring youngsters, but the Slovakia Badminton Federation wants to change that mindset. The promotion of the sport began over a decade ago. We started like 13 years ago with the specific programs for the schools and uh, creating uh, new clubs. But of course the most important for us is the shuttle time project that we are running in Slovakia for the last five years. And uh, that program of the BWF is extremely important and it's extremely successful for us. Their tireless efforts paid off and the country witnessed growth with close to 70 badminton clubs established in Slovakia. Everybody is amazed how fantastic our sport is, how fast it is and how uh, playable it is. So this is something we have to focus on and uh, hopefully that will bring uh, more and more people to our sport. The current national team has eight men and women shuttlers. Despite the relatively small size of the squad and the lack of professional trailing facilities and sparring partners in the country, the players were undeterred. We don't have a national centre in Slovakia. All uh, our players play in uh, other country and he plays train in Denmark. Uh, Martina and uh, Milan play in Odense. Maciej uh, train in Czech Republic in uh, Brno. So for us it's very difficult to prepare the national centre. Badminton is not popular sport in Slovakia. The Slovaks compete in various international tournaments for experience and ranking points. And their results have been encouraging for a growing badminton nation. Now we have uh, some money for, for our players and we use the money for, for tournaments. Our team was in uh, Jamaica. For us it was good results for us. We were in final men's doubles. Martina was in the final in the women's singles and Maciej lost in the semi-final. And then we was in uh, Brazil, Brazilian Open. And also Martina was in the semi-final in single. The average age of the current national team is 20 years. As the sport is still in its developing stage, the pathway for the country's young and potential players is unclear. Many promising shuttlers have left the sport for safer and more secure careers but some have stayed on in the hope of making it work. 
but of course it's, it's hard because you have to look for sponsors alone you don't get so much funding so this is you know when you have to choose between the school studies between badminton most of the players go for the studies but i'm trying my best to do both of it but yeah, this is the hardest part that we have to train somewhere else do school somewhere else find funding for that so yeah this is hard Slovakia knows that there is still a lot of work to be done and plenty of ground to be covered for the sport in the country. We still uh, look for the professional coaches uh, full time and the most important thing we are lacking is the National Badminton Centre. That is something we are uh, trying to focus in the coming years and hopefully we will be successful and we might also progress in the quality, not only quantity situation. The young shuttlers are also aiming high and have set their sights on higher goals and bigger targets. Yeah, my dream is our Olympic Games. Uh, I wanna, I wanted to participate in Rio. I tried. I didn't have the level, but I hope I can make it in Tokyo because I would be the first one from the from the men's to qualify to Olympics. So I wanna achieve that. Uh, my ambition, well, it's for sure uh, to qualify to Olympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. And then I also want to play at the World Championships, not this year, unfortunately, but hopefully next year. So those are my two biggest goals. Uh, the participation of our players at the Olympic Games in Beijing and London helped a lot uh, to popularize, popularize the sport. Uh, we had not been successful to qualify the player for the Rio, so we tried to find uh, new possibilities and new ways how to do it for the uh, Tokyo 2020, uh, just not only to qualify them for the Olympic Games, but also for the World Championship, also for the European Championship, and also, of course also for the European Games. It may take a while before they taste success, but if they back themselves and keep the faith, it may not be long before you see the flag of Slovakia at the highest levels in years to come. After the break, we meet Algeria's top men's singles player, Adel Hamek. Get connected with us on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and tell us what you think of the latest news or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favourite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos, share them with us on these social media platforms. The finest players will battle it out to book their place at the prestigious season-ending tournament, the Dubai World Super Series Finals. Only the top eight singles players and pairs of the 12-leg MetLife BWF World Super Series circuit will be invited to the desert city. Let's take a look at how the women's singles measure up in the destination Dubai rankings after four tournaments completed in England, India, Malaysia and Singapore. Chinese Taipei's Tai Zhu Ying leads the charge in women's singles. The world number one has claimed three of the four crowns so far Following behind is Rio Olympic champion Carolina Marin. The Spaniard grabbed three consecutive runner-up finishes in India, Malaysia and Singapore. Korea's Song Ji Hyun claims the third spot after reaching the semi-finals of all four Super Series. Japan boasts two players in the mix, with Akane Yamaguchi in fourth and Nozomi Okohara in seventh. Meanwhile, India Open winner Prasala V. Sindhu sits in fifth and Sun Yu ensured China's presence in the top eight. Log on to BWFWorldSuperSeries.com to read all the news and information on the MetLife BWF World Super Series tournaments. The destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday following a Super Series event, so check in on the site to keep up to date on the top eight players and pairs making their way to the finals in Dubai. The badminton scene in Africa has been traditionally dominated by South Africa, Nigeria and Mauritius. Though in recent years, 
A few other nations from the continent have emerged as strong contenders. That was best demonstrated at the recently concluded All-Africa Badminton Championships. Egypt won team gold for the first time, while Algeria took home the men's doubles gold and bronze, as well as clinching top spot in the men's singles. One player was responsible for two of those medals. Meet Adel Hamid. The Algerian stunned second seed Ahmed Salah of Egypt to clinch his first career title. You know, since I was a kid, it was like uh, a dream. That is a lot of sacrifice that people doesn't see. And uh, that is a dream uh, become true, really. You know, uh, badminton is uh, like, it's really my passion. So I made a lot of sacrifices, a lot of, really. So I'm very happy. Adele has plenty of reasons to be happy. Not only did the 24-year-old earn his maiden gold, he also ended a decade-long title drought for his nation. And who better than a fellow Algerian All-Africa champion himself to coach this ambitious youngster to victory? Nabil Asmari, I don't know if you know him. Um, already all uh, African championship. He made the uh, Olympics in Pekin. And uh, that is, he's my coach in France. I live in France but I have double nationality, that's why I can play with Algeria. As badminton is a developing sport in Algeria, it lacks support from the government. While Adele's wins will definitely help raise the profile of the sport within the country, it will still be a few more years before players are able to count on funding from sponsors and the government. Until then, the Algerian will have to look to other sources of income to keep his passion alive. Uh, I'm working um, like a uh, Bartender, a bartender and uh, in a restaurant. So I try to work and train every day. That is very, very difficult, but uh, I need to get money. That's why, uh, that's why I have to work. Sometimes, you know, I, I cannot go to the training. I prefer to, to, get, to stay with my, with my wife. While a full-time job may take its toll, the shuttler has plenty of determination and grit and only one goal. To qualify to Olympics, to qualify like every players, I mean, yeah. Maybe keep training and uh, maybe more and more and more and more. And maybe uh, try to, to eat well, drink water, you know, stop coca. And uh, yeah, no, keep going. Uh, so far, he is on track. With three men's double silvers and two men's doubles bronzes under his belt with partner Mohammed Abdurrahim Balabi, his performances are proof that Adele's badminton career is on an upward trajectory. And representing his country in both categories is a formula that seems to be working well for this rising talent. Yeah, but uh, it's usual for me to play single and double. I try them. It's usual now to play the both. If I can focus on the both, I will, I will keep it. He's more fast in double, so that's why he could help me in single. Of course, none of this would have been possible if Adele hadn't chosen to pick up a badminton racket as a teenager. I meet the, the right people at the right moment. I think that is, uh, that is what I, I'm now at my, my level. Eight years on, badminton has become his passion. The world number 287's dream is the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And although the route up might be a long one, Adele Hamek has the right attitude that might just get him to Japan. Let's take a look at the tournaments coming up in the next few weeks in our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week, we sit down with Malaysia's number two mixed doubles pair, Han Ken Ming and Lai Pi Jing, as they tell us what makes their partnership tick. See you next week.